Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zevron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Deck. So as you know, Thursday means it's Tier 1 Thursday here in Instant Deck Deck Land, but I will admit, I stretched it a little bit this week. The deck we're looking at this week is super sweet. It's a really unique turn 1 win combo deck for Modern, but it's not actually Tier 1. It is a real deck, so if you're interested in Legacy or play Legacy, you should know and be aware of how this deck works because you will run into it, but it's not really Tier 1. But like I said, it is a real deck that's worth knowing about. Uh, also of note, this is kind of a budget option for Legacy. Of course, Legacy is so expensive that budget doesn't mean the same thing in the format that it does to a lot of people. So, But at $780, it is a fourth of the cost of an average deck. When you consider Legacy often $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, this is about as cheap as it gets for a a known real deck in the format. So this build recently took Jonathan Cicerelli to a top 8 finish at an Italian Legacy event. So congrats to Jonathan on his finish with the deck. A quick reminder before we break down One Land Belcher, if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it made into videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So one land belcher is built around Goblin Char Belcher. Four mana to cast, three to activate, and it essentially deals a lethal amount of damage to your opponent. Basically, you reveal cards from the top of your library till you reveal a land, and then Goblin Char Belcher deals damage to the player equal to the number of non-land cards you reveal. So, if you can reveal 20 cards to you kill your opponent, you also get a bonus if the land you hit is a mountain. It doubles the damage, so you can reveal 10 cards, and then kill your opponent thanks to the damage doubling if that land that you reveal after 10 cards is a mountain. So obviously this is really powerful, but if you think about a normal magic deck, you have what, 24 lands let's say, almost every other card or at least every third card in your deck is going to be a land, so this is going to deal like 3 damage. So how do you make Goblin Char Belcher work? The trick is to find a way to only play a single land. So in this deck, one land, one land in the entire your deck. That's why it's one land belcher. The land in this case is Taiga. Uh, you could use a stomping ground. It really doesn't make much of a difference because this deck is a I win on turn one or I lose deck. It is very, very rare that this deck is going to play a long game of magic. The other key piece to this combo is land grant, which you can reveal in your hand if you have zero lands, and you reveal your entire hand, actually, and then you get to search for a forest, and Taiga, of course, counts as both a forest and a mountain, as the card itself says, so this lets you get your one land out of your deck, which means when you activate Char Belcher, you reveal your entire deck, which means you're going to deal like 40-some damage to your opponent, which is always essentially enough to kill your opponent. So... How do we get to the seven mana necessary on turn one to play and activate a Goblin Char Belcher? And the crazy thing about this deck is, even though we only got one land, I think we have the most mana sources of any deck in the Legacy format. Maybe any deck in Magic. There's so many things that make mana. Essentially, every card, other than our win the game cards, are making mana one way or another. So, Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Elvish Spirit Guide, Simeon Spirit Guide, all plus one mana, all of them one shot shots except Chromox, which makes you exile a card from your hand, which is a bit annoying, but you don't care if these are one-shot mana sources because, like I said, you're either winning the game on turn one by counting up to seven mana, or you're going to lose, and your opponent's going to have a force of will, you fizzle out, and uh, you go on to the next game, and you emptied your hand for nothing. Uh, we also have a ton of red rituals, right of flame, First one's kind of a one-mana desperate ritual or pyretic ritual. Second one becomes a dark ritual in red. Third one is just a ton of mana. So uh, it gets better the more copies of Rite of Flame you cast and have in your graveyard. Desperate ritual, pyretic ritual, each plus one mana. Seething songs plus two mana. So it's essentially a three-mana dark ritual. But these are all just mana sources that help us count up to the seven mana we need to win the game with our Goblin Char Belcher. 
Tinderwall also makes mana, and Lion's Eye Diamond is both the best and the worst of our mana sources. So, if we have a Goblin Charbelcher on the battlefield, Lion's Eye Diamond all by itself gives us the three mana we need to activate it. So, ideally, we ramp up to four mana, casting our Rituals and our Lotus Petals and so forth. We cast our Goblin Charbelcher. Then we can just play and crack a Lion's Eye Diamond, makes three mana. We gotta discard our hand, but oh well, we're gonna win the game. Use that mana to activate our Goblin Goblin Charbelcher. On the other hand, Lion's Eye Diamond doesn't help us cast Goblin Charbelcher because we would have to discard the Charbelcher when we sack Lion's Eye Diamond for mana. So bad before we have a Charbelcher, good after we have a Charbelcher because it gives us enough mana all by itself to activate the Charbelcher. Gitaxia Probe and Mana Morphos basically just non cards. They do little bits of something, but they basically fill up slots in the deck and they don't cost us a card because they redraw. And remember, when you're going to win on turn one, you just gotta see as many cards as possible, so it's very important. Gitaxian Probe lets us know if the coast is clear. Uh, if we're nervous, and Force of Will is very, very strong against this deck. That is the problem with this deck. If Force of Will was not a card, this would probably be the best deck in Legacy. But with Force of Will, if your opponent forces your Charbelcher, uh, you're just gonna empty your entire hand for nothing. So Probe kinda lets you know if it's safe to go for it. Manamorphose does a little bit of mana fixing, which matters for some sideboard cards, but mostly just a redraw. And then, along with Charbelcher, which we've talked about ad nauseum, we have a backup finisher in Empty the Orange, which is really important because it lets us get around the force of will so because of storm and how storm works and how the copies go on the stack even if the spell is countered we can use empty the warrens to win if our opponent has a force of will and we know about that say from our Gitaxian probe we try to win with empty instead of goblin charbelcher just make a ton of goblins and win that way it's not as quick or as guaranteed as a charbelcher because our opponent could i don't know play a ratchet bomb or engineered explosives on their turn and wipe away all the tokens but it is a very good finisher when you can cast a ton of spells in the same turn. The last main deck card is Burning Wish, and it kind of leads us into our sideboard. The key thing about Burning Wish is it can only find sorceries, so we have a ton of interesting sorcery sideboard options, and here's our sideboard, along with the sorceries that we're tutoring up with our Burning Wish. So, we can find an Empty the Warrens as a backup finisher, so this gives us six copies of Empty the Warrens in our main deck, because we can get the one from our sideboard with our four Burning Wishes, which means we have ten finishers in total, which means odds are actually pretty good that we have one in our opening hand when you consider a uh, 60 card deck, seven in your opening hand. Goblin War Strike. If we already have an Empty the Warrens, lets us kill our opponent right away instead of waiting to untap. One mana damage equal to the number of goblins we control. So if we can Empty the Warrens, let's say uh, X10, or with a storm count of 9, so we get 10 copies, that's going to give us 20 goblins. One mana Goblin War Strike kills our opponent. Tendrils of Agony, it's another storm card, and it gives us a way to directly kill our opponent, so we don't have to worry about our goblin tokens getting messed up. Telemann Performance can steal one of our opponent's creatures, or but more importantly, in a creature-free matchup, it's five mana, mill your opponent's entire deck. And then we have a little bit of interaction we can search for. Pyroclasm can deal with our opponent's creatures, especially like Thalias and stuff that might slow us down if we can't go for it on turn one. Shattering Spree gets rid of artifacts. Thornton of Amethyst, things that make our spells more expensive. Reverent Silence gets rid of Ley Lines of Sanctity, stuff that would keep us from killing our opponent with our Goblin Charbelcher, and we get to cast it for free since our one land's going to be a forest, and making our opponent gain six life is not that bad considering we deal 40 plus damage with Charbelcher. Inferno Tutor is another card advantage card that we can find. Basically, we can cast Burning Wish to our last card, find an Infernal Tutor, and then that turns Burning Wish basically into a tutor for any card in our deck instead of just sorceries in our sideboard. So we can Burning Wish for Infernal Tutor, Inferno Tutor for Goblin Charbelcher, Goblin Charbelcher, kill our opponent. Diminishing Returns gives us a draw seven. Trash for Treasure is mostly more mana, also a way to get back our Goblin Charbelcher if it happens to get killed. And then a couple of non-Burning Wish cards, Pyroblast to counter those pesky Force of Wills, and Xanted Swarm makes our opponent not be able to cast Force of Will. So we play this on turn one, we attack with it. Our opponent can't cast spells for the rest of the turn after it attacked, which means we have free reign to go off with our rituals and mana sources and Goblin Charbelcher. And that's One Land Belcher. 
for Legacy. And that's our instant deck deck for today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.